places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep that frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy, see? They've made that something that, that, is, that is, should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy bum. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell. It's Red Friday right here on the Liberty One Network, August 24th, 2018. When I say Red Friday, that's why I always wear this red Marine Corps shirt on Friday to remember my brothers and sisters that are deployed. So you should do that too. Just for the heck of it. Why not? It reminds you and everybody else that uh, we still have heroes and patriots in harm's way in foreign shores. So uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, a couple of things, starting off with Senator John McCain. He's near death and has uh, withdrawn all of his medical treatment. They expect him to succumb to cancer very soon. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, how Molly Tibbetts knew her killer. She and her brothers went to high school with him. And uh, we're going to talk about Facebook's wall in uh, Forest City, North Carolina. They've got this huge wall. They they don't want any unsavory people in their compound. So why can't the United States have a wall to keep the unsavory people out of the United States? Irony, thy name is... Irony and hypocrisy, thy name is Facebook. Uh, 34 individuals were all arrested here in Michigan over the last couple of days in a human trafficking sting. Two of them come from right here in Alpena, Michigan. We're going to be talking about that. And if uh, if we've got time in this hour, then I've got a couple other stories I'd like to get to. Let's just leave those to be a surprise for now. But first, we want to talk about Senator John McCain. Because everybody is calling this man a hero. Now, having lost my father, my mother, my wife, and several friends to cancer, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Not even John McCain. And uh, I want to try to be real careful, but I've got to be honest, folks. John McCain wasn't a hero as he's being proclaimed on the Twitterverse today. Take a look at a couple of these tweets from uh, folks on Twitter. Senator Dianne Feinstein says that she can honestly say that John McCain is a true American patriot. Joe Scarborough says America has been blessed by God with patriots like Senator John McCain. Former UN Ambassador Susan Rice says that she's grateful for his courageous leadership and dedicated service our country. And Mitt Romney says that no man this century better exemplifies honor, patriotism, and service, sacrifice, and country first than Senator John McCain. Well, I'm sorry, but there are a lot of veterans that are going to take exception to that. We remember John McCain a little bit differently. He was shot down in uh, North in North Vietnam in North Vietnam uh, and on October 26, 1967, flying his 23rd bombing mission over North Vietnam when his A4E Skyhawk was shot down by a missile over Hanoi. He'd broken both arms and a leg when he ejected from the aircraft and nearly drowned when he parachuted into Group Bok Lake. Now, uh, Senator John McCain violated Article 5 of the U.S. Soldiers' Code of Conduct, which states very clearly, when questioned, should I become a prisoner of war, I am required to give name, rank, service number, and date of birth. I will evade answering further questions to the utmost of my ability. I will make no oral or written statements disloyal to my country and its allies or harmful to their cause. Well, John McCain didn't uh, abide by the code of conduct. Now, McCain later said 
in interviews that uh, he always felt that his statement was dishonorable. But that he learned that every man has his breaking point, and he had reached. So uh, let's take a look at this propaganda tape that John McCain made for the North Vietnamese. To the Vietnamese people and the government of the DRV, from John Sidney McCain, 624787, Lieutenant Commander, U.S. Navy, born 29 August 1936, Panama, home state, where I am. Shot down 26 October 1967, A4E aircraft. I, as a U.S. Airman, am guilty of crimes against the Vietnamese country and people. I have bombed their cities, towns, and villages and caused many injuries, even death, to the people of Vietnam. I was captured in the capital city of Hanoi while attacking it. After I was captured, I was taken to the hospital in Hanoi, where I received very good medical treatment. I was given an operation on my leg, which allowed me to walk again, and a cast on my right arm, which was badly broken in three places. The doctors were very good, and they knew a great deal about the practice of medicine. I remained in the hospital for some time and regained much of my health and strength. Since I arrived in the camp of detention, I have received humane and lenient treatment. I received medical treatment and food even though I came here as an aggressor, and the people who I injured have much difficulty in their living standards. I wish to express my deep gratitude for my kind treatment, and I will never forget this kindness extended to me. I have no doubt that Senator John McCain was treated poorly by the North Vietnamese, even tortured. But by making those propaganda recordings, he violated Article 5 of the Military Code of Conduct and put his fellow flyers and other U.S. troops in danger. He didn't even try to tell the world that he was making these statements after, after being tortured. I'm going to introduce you folks to a true American hero right now. His name is Admiral Jeremiah Denton. He was also forced to make uh, propaganda recordings for the North Vietnamese. But Admiral Denton remembered Article 5. And he used these propaganda recordings to blank Morse code with his eyelids, blanking out the word torture, to prove to the world that he was making these statements under duress. That, my friends, is an American patriot, a hero that we can all be proud of. And I'll bet there's a significant portion of you that have never heard his name. Yet John McCain is being lauded as just a really brave man when he's anything but. His uh, record in, in, in the Congress shows that he didn't care much for the fate of POWs that were left behind either. He got himself appointed to the chairmanship of a congressional subcommittee that was looking into uh, the subject of POWs left behind in North Vietnam, some of them that had been uh, sent to China, some to Russia. Their families wanted them back. Even if they were dead, they wanted their bones so that they could have closure. But John McCain wasn't having any part of it. He knew that a congressional hearing into POWs from uh, Vietnam and Korea would expose his own treason for giving aid and comfort to the enemy in a time of war. So he did everything in his power to shut that committee down. Let's listen to a few of his contemporary rep representatives and senators who uh, lay it all out for you. He probably did more harm to the idea of trying to get the truth out than any other single person through the efforts he did to block the release of classified intelligence dealing with the POWMIA problem. McCain stepped in and in effect made it harder to get documentation. That certainly hurt us because we had hoped for a massive release of documentation. Many, many documents are, were held back for, for no reason and our, our goal on the committee was to just 
dump this stuff, to, to declassify it, literally, to the public. Uh, but, of course, uh, you know, uh, they withheld information from the committee. Uh, the U.S. government held all kinds of information from the committee, withheld information from the committee. I know that for a fact. He didn't want nobody to check his background. Because a lot of POWs that were with him in the camp said he was a, was a collaborator of the enemy. And he didn't want nobody looking into his background in the camp, what went on in that camp. That stuff is still classified, so nobody could see it. And he just had it classified forever. So nobody will ever look at it. Even POWs, we knew who wanted to see their own, their own uh, debriefings, were not permitted because of the McCain uh, regulation. But where did McCain get compliments for doing this? The bureaucrats at the Pentagon. Right. Because it put a workload on them. It put a workload on them for missing and action people. And did we need that bill to handle a Scott Spiker case? Oh, you bet we did. And also what it did, and this is what he really opposed, and if you remember the contentiousness we got into him in his office, was that it would hold the bureaucrats accountable by penalty of law That's if right. they lied or if they withheld information. That's right. And he fought tooth and nail to protect those bureaucrats. Yes. Because they were protecting him. I could never understand that. Why would we, uh, if someone was guilty of withholding information that would help us to solve the mystery of what happened to an MIA and did it deliberately, why would we not want to prosecute that person? Um, so I could never understand it. I thought the language was written. I, th I know Bob Dornan had a hand in it. I thought the language was written very well. Uh, I, I supported it, fought for it hard uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the U.S. Senate and mostly on the Armed Services Committee where we debated it, but it was, it was watered down to basically where it was almost worthless. Now, one of the things that happened with that bill is that we were submarined. The House side, we passed it uh, with no, no, I don't believe anybody opposed it. Was it, it was a pretty much unanimous vote. 401 to 0 on the House, with every single Republican who is serving, sponsoring it, and about a third of the Democrats. And on the Senate side, we had, we had one person standing in the way of getting in positions that would have been very tough on government bureaucrats who didn't tell the truth. And that one person was Senator John McCain. John McCain uh, uh, and John Kerry both were um, not pursuing this at the, with the same uh, approach that I was. He insisted that no committee be set up unless he was chairman. So obviously his intent was to kill everything. Okay, uh, I appreciate you inviting me here, but what I don't understand is this, you're supposed to have a committee of 12. <laughs> all my congressmen from Connecticut walked out. Uh, all the senators, uh, senators were on that panel. They all walked away. McCain took off, Kerry took off. All that evidence was coming out in Korea because they knew that if they came and listened to the truth, they'd have to keep the hearings open. They didn't want any information. So they weren't interested in doing anything with the information other than trying to discredit it. North Korea did not return a large number of American servicemen at the end of the war and that some of the men left behind were sent to communist China and to the Soviet Union. Internal documents and statements made at the time also show that our government believed that men were still alive in captivity and until only a few months ago has kept that reality from the American people. It has covered up what it knew through a pattern of denial, misleading statements, in some cases lies, and by doing so with regard to the Korean conflict, it broke its commitment with the people who put on the uniform to fight for the freedoms and protection that we and our allies enjoy today. John McCain denied the families of POW's closure when he shut down the investigation into the fate of POWs from Korea and Vietnam. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to tell you about his latest treason. Treason that was exposed on Fox News and cost Eric Bowling his job. I'm Pete Santilli, and you're watching The Truth is Viral. Do not look away. We'll be back with more in just a moment.
whether we like it or not, radical Islamists are bringing the fight to us right here in the United States. As Americans, we have the right and the duty to protect our friends and our family from Islamic terrorism. We don't negotiate with terrorists, we just kill them. Real Americans, the young, the old, men, women, even the Amish, stand ready to protect the American homeland from Islamic terrorism. And more and more, they're turning to the most terrifying force multiplier that the world has ever seen. It's called silver bullet gun oil. This is made from 13% pig fat and it is guaranteed to send an Islamic terrorist straight to hell. In 1902, Black Jack Pershing, famous U.S. Army General, realized the effectiveness of this psychological weapon on Islamic terrorism. He rounded up 50 Islamic terrorists and he tied 49 of them to stakes. And as they stood there awaiting their death, he brought in a few pigs and put them, in a, uh, slaughtered them in a, in a pit in front of these hostages. Boy, they were, they were terrified. And, and then they got shot, every single one of them. They were buried in the pit and covered with the pig's entrails. The 50th terrorist was let go so that he could go tell the rest of his buddies what he'd seen. And for the next 42 years, there was not a single incidence of Islamic terrorism anywhere in the world. That is how effective this weapon is. Since 2004, silver bullet gun oil has been used by members of the United States Marine Infantry, Marine Recon, U.S. Marine Scout Snipers, Navy SEALs, regular Army, Army Rangers, Green Berets, Reserve and National Guard units deployed or being deployed to the Middle East Theater of Operations. Silver Bullet Gun Oil is used by M1 Abrams tank platoons. Apache and Cobra gunships use Silver Bullet in their miniguns. Many of Allah's holy warriors have been greatly disappointed upon realizing that they did not pass go and they did not collect 72 virgins. A number of air marshals use Silver Bullet Gun Oil in their in-flight weaponry. It's been distributed to members of police tactical teams throughout the United States from coast to coast, including members of my local law enforcement community. Oh yeah, buddy, I count on them to protect me from these Islamic terrorists. I can't keep my head on a swivel 24 hours a day. So yeah, they're the first ones that I gave a bottle of silver bullet gun oil to. The psychological impact of silver bullet gun oil might very well prevent many attacks on American citizens in the U.S. Islamic terrorists don't care about dying, folks. In fact, they welcome the idea. So we have to take that incentive away from them by guaranteeing them an afterlife in hell. Yes, folks, silver bullet gun oil is actually a very good product. I use it myself. And what amazed me is that last year, we, we, we have a hunting camp every year. And uh, a bunch of us get together and go out there and shoot guns, blow stuff up. <laughs> we had a real good time. Of course, we used Tannerite. It's legal. It works. Okay. But when everybody else's gun was jamming, because it was negative two, two degrees below zero, my silver bullet gun oil worked fine. To order your bottle of silver bullet gun oil, send a check or money order for $24.95 to Post Office Box 91, Alpena, Michigan 49707. Or you can use a credit card at www.paypal.me slash the truth is viral. Yeah, folks, silver bullet gun oil is a deal. <laughs> and we do need your help to support the truth is viral. We're being gigged all over social media, YouTube, Facebook. Twitter, they're really hammering it at us. And I think you noticed that we had some audio difficulties when the stream first started coming up. Well, it was going fine out of my board. I can see the levels right here in front of me, and it was working great. But uh, I guess Mark Zuckerberg has a has a man crush on uh, Mr. McCain, <laughs> so he wasn't letting us put it out. And uh, yeah, so like, comment, and share the video. And if you have the ability, please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and hit that PayPal button and help us save lives and win souls for Jesus Christ in these very last days. And I do that by bringing you the truth, the truth that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know, the truth that the mainstream media ruins people over. You remember Eric Bowling, right? Eric Bowling's a great guy. He's now working at CRTV because he was fired from Fox News in uh, 2015 
after uh, he revealed live on the five that uh, John McCain had links to ISIS terrorists in Syria. On the June 23rd, 2014 episode of The Five, co-host Eric Bowling, popular news anchor and, co and host of the show Cashing In on Fox News Saturday morning, dropped this bombshell. They were Here's not agreeing much on, guys. Here, listen, <laughs> this is the you. reason why I'm going to be, agree with Bob on this one. Yeah. We're now seeing pictures of Abrams tanks and Humvees with ISIS fighters in them. Why you is know, that? Why Eric? is that? Because is Iraqi that, soldiers have laid down their arms. Because the Syrian rebels that we we armed, who were supposed to help us, are the same people who've turned around and decided they want Iraq as well. And that ties Syria. right back into not having yeah, an appropriate have, on, status, status of forces pictures, agreement to secure have, the region. Hold on, hold on. Shine. We have pictures oh, of God, United States so senators useless. with terrorists that we won't run here, but it'll run on other magazines, it'll run in other areas, but we won't run it on this show. He's standing with terrorists. I, I'm not, well, listen, all I'm saying is we don't know who our friends are, we don't know who we're arming, we're not, we don't know who we're, who we're giving money to, we're not, we don't know who we're training. We should certainly So what should we do? Go hide in a closet mass. with our favorite no, blanket and a flashlight? No, let's put 500,000 United States no. forces on the ground and I don't believe, do it. No, what kill them. You, you see a terrorist, for? kill them. These are the photographs that Bowling was talking about. They show Arizona Senator John McCain meeting with quote-unquote moderate Syrian rebels. The only problem with that is that one of the moderate Syrian rebels in these photographs is none other than Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of the terrorist group ISIS. This is nothing but proof positive that members of our own government are in bed with the most vile scum on the face of the planet. But here on the further investigation, here are the men that were uh, with Senator John McCain that day, in addition to Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, guy in the background there. The guy on the left is former al-Qaeda operative Abu Mosa, who was an ISIS press officer. On the right, Mohammed Noor, suspected in the kidnapping of three hostages shown in ISIS beheading videos. And uh, they were not nice guys. But they were friends of Senator John McCain. And although I cannot yet prove it, I can prove that Hillary Clinton was running guns to Syria. I showed that on the episode of The Truth is Viral like last week, I think. But uh can't prove that John McCain was complicit in it yet. But this man is not a is not a hero. Definitely not. And while I sympathize with his family and, and pray for them, because they have to be going through a nightmare. I I, I know that no matter what he's done in his life, they love him. And, you know, I pray for their comfort and uh, for, for God to reach down and, and assuage their grief. But we can't let history remember him as a hero. Eric Bowling lost his job at Fox after he uh, said that. The excuse given was that he had been sending pictures of his genitalia to his fellow uh, Fox co-workers. That was a lie. No pictures ever appeared. No accuser ever appeared in public. They just said Eric Bowling sent pictures of his penis to uh, fellow co-workers. And, and that's how they destroyed him. So that this deep state asshole could be known as a hero. And strong. So, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, John McCain is a traitor. He's a coward. Who gave up his friends and his fellow flyers. And other U.S. servicemen when he violated Article 5 of the Code of Conduct without even attempting to show the world that he was making these statements under duress. And when he got back home, because of who his father was, who his grandfather was, he was rewarded with 
a position first in the United States House of Representatives and then a seat in the United States Senate. And my friends, it's just wrong. Okay, so uh, now let's go on to Molly Tibbetts. This poor young lady was murdered by an illegal immigrant. And it's really sad because in her last few tweets that I presented on last Wednesday night's show, she had totally drunk the Kool-Aid. The liberal lunatic Kool-Aid. And she was all in favor of United States Im- or, uh, illegal immigration into the United States. She didn't care about vetting any of them. She even posted a photograph of herself holding a sign that says, I hate white people. But she'd been brainwashed by her college professors and probably even her parents. That young lady didn't know any better. She didn't know the truth. And that's, like I say, that's a part of my mission of saving lives and winning souls for Jesus Christ is to bring you the truth, to bring the truth to the people that otherwise wouldn't get it from the mainstream media. You know, I'm all in favor of legal immigration. Nothing wrong with that. My parents were immigrants. Well, my grandparents. They came from Ireland. Ireland. <laughs> Don't you know? But they came here legally. And I don't care where you come from. You come from Mexico, El Salvador, South America, the Middle East. I don't care. Just go to a United States embassy, fill out an application to come to the United States and do it legally. Is that such a, a burden to ask? I don't think so. But uh, Democrats are fighting it tooth and nail. They literally want open borders so that anybody can come into the United States and stay here and even vote. That's worked out real well for San Francisco. They're paying people $180,000 a year literally cleaning up the poop off the streets of that shithole. Sanctuary cities, Rahm Emanuel in Chicago, another sanctuary city. As if they don't have enough problems. Come on in, Ms. 13. Come on in. Liberal idiots. But something a lot of people don't know, something that's just come out in the last day, is that uh, not only was Molly in sympathy with illegal immigration, she knew the man that killed her. This is Ilas Menares, Christian Rivera's ex-girlfriend. She was friends with Molly Tibbetts on Facebook. Rivera was arrested and charged with the murder of Molly, who had been missing for a month, after security cameras led authorities to his car. Then, after he'd been apprehended, Rivera confessed and led police to Tibbetts' body which was hidden under corn stalks, and explained to investigators that he parked his car and ran alongside the 20-year-old when Tibbetts threatened to call the police. He blacked out. Well, isn't that convenient? Well, according to this Yahoo article, Molly Tibbetts knew his girlfriend. She responded to her in this uh, post on Facebook right here. That moment when you feel like you got no one there for you. And Molly Tibbetts responded with a pair of double question marks. She was initially suspected that she might have been involved that she might have been involved in Tibbetts' murder, but she has been since cleared. According to this Yahoo article, Moneras and Rivera began dating in 2013 and had a baby together before reportedly splitting in 2015. Photos and comments over the years 
prove that the two were involved romantically. In 2014, Menares posted a photo with Rivera and captioned it with heart emojis. When she uploaded a new selfie, Rivera called her his princess in the comments. He also linked himself to Menares on his page. Rivera posted a photo of a baby and tagged his ex-girlfriend. Menares has not been publicly active on her Facebook page in three years, but former partners reportedly have the, the former partners haven't spoken since 2015. And interestingly, folks, the very day that uh, Molly Tibbetts was killed, she opened up a new Facebook page. The article continues, despite the coincidental links, authorities have confirmed she's not a suspect in the case. Rivera, an illegal immigrant who had been in the U.S. from four to seven years, is the sole murder in, or sole suspect in the murder of Tibbetts. According to surveillance video footage the authorities spent hours reviewing, he was the last person to see Tibbetts alive. So they even went to the same high school. Her uh, brothers knew him. They're all mentioned it together in, in, uh, in uh, one of their yearbooks. So she knew this guy. She knew the danger that she was in. Well, actually, she denied the the danger that she was in. And that's really sad. Because she didn't have to die. Her college professors and her... Uh, Family had, had brainwashed her into drinking the liberal Kool-Aid and she just was suffering from Trump derangement syndrome. Hating her own race. And it just breaks my heart that all these uh, liberal uh, talking points, their love for the illegal alien, their desire to see the United States swarming in illegal aliens was ultimately what got her killed. That is really sad. So uh, now let's go to uh, this article here. About 34 men that were picked up in a massive Michigan prostitution sting. Thirty-four men were arrested in this thing. Gumbags, one and all. Take a look at a couple of these pictures. They were all charged with using computers to facilitate prostitution. Two of them were right from right here in Alpena, where I live. You can look at some of these pictures and say, yeah, I can tell he was a gumbag. But some of them look fairly normal. Scumbag there, obviously. Oh, bad scumbag. 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 Eh, kind of normal. Scumbag. Scumbag. Oh, scumbag. He's like, what did I do? <laughs> I'll tell you what you did. 73 charges have been placed against these 34 men who range in age from 18 to 65. Of those charges, 70 are split evenly between solicitation for prostitution and using a computer, a computer to commit a crime. The remaining charges involve possession of marijuana, possession of oxycodone, and possession of a firearm while committing a felony. One man was arrested twice during the sting operation. He was. Well, I wish. I wish they uh, had live PD up here in up here in Michigan. Uh, that would be great. I'd like to. I would like to have seen the look on his face. That was probably the guy with the surprised look on his face. Like I can't believe you guys caught me again. Their names are James Scott Johnson, Traverse City. He was the guy that was arrested twice. 
Christopher Harold Suckland, Robert Emanuel Sherlock, <laughs> Kenneth John Johnson, David Ray Williams, Ryan Dale Dycraft, Chad Allen Morrison, Stephen Kirk Kohlberg, Scott Thomas Barrett, Cody Daniel Sprague, D. John D. Edwards, John Joseph John Ockert, Matthew Doyle Hoyt, Timothy Robert Cook, James Dell James Packett, Jason John Beebe, Clinton James Bryan, Christopher James West, Matthew M. Bozma, M. Stuart Becker, Irving C. Pettit, Evan Rahim Carew, Mark McDaniels, Richard Joseph Bennett, James Ivan Thompson, David Kirk, J David James Kirkham, Ahmed Abdul Rahim Al Kubadi. Nicholas Andrew Wojciechowski, Woj, Wojciechowski. There we go. You'd think living up here in Alpine, I'd uh, get used to the Polish names, but damn, I'm telling you, they're really hard to pronounce sometimes. Ryan Michael Shepard, Jesse Ryan Richardson, Patrick Henry McDonald, James John Fisher, Derek Taylor Shirley, and James or Michael James Tilly. Scumbags, one and all. You gotta look out for your kids, folks. Because these monsters are out there. And they want to take your children and they want to hurt them. Pay attention to what your kids are doing on social media. Go through their text messages. Know who they're going out to see when they say, Oh, I'm just going out to see a friend. You make sure you know who that friend is. That's the way I raised all five of my children. Whenever they left this house, I knew who they were going to see and where they were going to be. It's very simple. And they turned out to be pretty good kids. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what else have we got here? Oh yeah, Facebook's wall. <laughs> Facebook has a wall around its uh, complex in Forest City, North Carolina. Apparently, they don't want undesirables to come into their compound. And I can't really say that I blame them. Uh, I wouldn't want people coming into my house. I've, I've got cameras all over the outside. Ever since that guy came from Portland to deliver me that poison pizza. I have put nothing past anybody. I mean, I mean, that's a tremendous waste of money to me to come out here and uh, fly 4,600 miles round trip, drive six hours total, just so he could uh, give me an adulterated pizza and see the look on my face when he gave it to me. But, uh, so yeah, I don't take any, any chances anymore. And we're going to look at this uh, video right here one from Facebook. Check this out. Drive down the road here just a little bit. Check out this big, beautiful, liberal wall Facebook has around their complex. What's wrong, Facebook? Don't want anybody coming in? Don't want anybody invading your territory look at this this is the facebook complex in forest city north carolina look at those big beautiful walls and the security guards and look at that fencing man wouldn't it be nice to have border security around like that around the united states check this out let's just see how far this big ass damn fence goes look there's facebook Look at your wall, Mark. Look at your wall. Why don't you want anybody inside? What's wrong, Facebook? Scared somebody's gonna come in and attack you? You've got to love the hypocrisy. Fucking hypocrites. Yeah, they're hypocrites, all right, folks. It, it's, it's like... Uh... Yeah, they always... 
It's like those uh, Hollywood stars that cry about gun violence every every time that uh, there's a, a a shooting. Yet they walk around with armed guards, and they live behind walled and uh, fenced houses. They keep themselves safe, but they don't want us to be safe. That's that's hypocrisy. They think that uh, just because they're, they don't have any problems, that we shouldn't either. Okay, now uh, <laughs> I'm going to show you something funny. This is really hilarious. This was uh, posted on Facebook by uh, Uncle Sam's Misguided Children. The Marine Corps euphemism for USMC. You know how PETA was getting all over Nabisco for having their animals in cages. They was uh, like a Barnum and Bailey circus uh, thing that they had going on. And well, Nabisco caved to their pressure and, and released these animals. And oh, thank God. I was so worried about these fictional animals and their fictional cages. Now they're free to roam the fictional plains where the fictional lion can tear the fictional zebra to shreds. <laughs> I love my Marine Corps brothers. They, they are funny. I'm here to tell you. Oh, there's, there's another uh, picture I want to show you that, uh, that popped up. It, it, was, it was really hilarious. This, uh, this young lady, got her name is Naomi. And she got a uh, job at NASA. And she was really excited about it. She says, everyone shut the fuck up. <laughs> Excuse my language. I got accepted for a NASA internship. And a, tw and a Twitter user by the name of Homer Hickam said, language. Naomi says, suck my dick and balls. I'm working at NASA. Homer replies, and I'm on the National Space Council that oversees NASA. <laughs> How much you want to bet that poor Naomi did not get her NASA job? Oh, I'll tell you, folks, there really is a, such a thing as karma, and sometimes it can be <laughs> really sweet. But... Uh, I try to do things nice. I try to do things the right way. And uh, just because I'm a conservative publisher, I'm being censored for it. I want you to look at this. This is a, a screenshot of my the two versions of the same video. Here, last Wednesday night, I did the, the show uh, talking about how Rivera had... Got been granted bail, five million dollar bail for killing Molly. Even you know, the the Bundy spent two years in prison without any possibility of bail, and they never hurt hurt anybody. But uh, Rivera was granted a five million dollar bail. He probably won't be able to pay it, but he was granted it anyway. Anyway, that episode of the Truth Is Viral right here on the Liberty One Network went viral. It's uh, up at two hundred thousand views right now. And just a couple of hours after the show was over, the same video went live on YouTube. I had to uh, upload it separately because my ability to live stream is still uh, revoked. Same video, same tags, 278 views. So yeah, Facebook is screwing with us, but YouTube and Google are even worse. They are conspiring to keep the truth from the people. They've even got poor John James, a uh, uh, Republican candidate for senator in Michigan who's running against Debbie Stabenow. He's shadow banned on Twitter. You've seen the uh, congressmen like Jim Jordan, Matt Gates, and Devin Nunez who are all shadow banned on Twitter. It's nothing short of election interference, my friends. Now, I've been in touch with the James campaign, and uh, they tell me that they're working on, on uh, 
on this shadow banning thing. They need to get busy. Because the midterms are coming up. And candidates for Congress, candidates for Senate, and those that support them are being silenced. They're not letting you hear the truth. And that can't be allowed to happen. So we need your help. I need your help desperately in order to provide me with the tools that I need to keep on bringing you the truth each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. So if, you, if it's within your ability, please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and hit that PayPal button and donate whatever won't put you out. Again, if you are on Social Security disability or some other type of fixed income, I don't want your money. Our Father in Heaven will move those who have the ability to donate what they can. What you can do, what everybody can do, is like, comment, and share all of the videos that you see right here on the Liberty One Network. Share our pages. Share The Truth is Viral. Share the Guerrilla Media Network. And share Before It's News. And share all of the hosts that are here on, on the, uh, the Liberty One Network. Because we, I'm, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I, I am proud. I, I am literally proud to be among such an all-star cast of characters. <laughs> and speaking of characters, my friend Jermaine Bozio is up next. That's something uh, you don't want to miss. He's a very entertaining young man and uh, very articulate and intelligent, and he always has a great show. So uh, I guess I'm out of here. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral on the Liberty One Network. I, my name is Bob Powell. I'll see you Monday night. And as always, God bless, simplify, and oorah. Have a great evening, folks. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow the apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth is Viral. Like The Truth is Viral on Facebook. And if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com.